flick, you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, welcome to the hood table. Where we chop up local and global events vocally. You don't really wanna miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little, get that wine in your system for your glass a little. Expose current events, talk trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. Get addicted to the content, got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and your job parking lot before you clock in. They don't wanna miss a second of this HD content. Everybody think they got something to say, so it's an open invitation. Bring it to the table. But if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in. We gon' probably turn it back until you start trying again. Uh, yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Hey, everybody. What's up? Come on in. Come on in. How's everybody doing this Sunday afternoon? I hope everybody is doing well. And I hope you guys are not dealing with any bad weather because um, we've been going through some really cold weather and snowstorms. And I know a lot of people in different areas from Michigan to, you know, the East Coast <laughs> has been dealing with snowstorms this past week or this past weekend. So I hope everybody is safe, warm, and, and dry. And I begin that you are having a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Now, as you can see from the title of this live, oh my God, I couldn't wait to get into this review for this movie by Tyler Perry, mainly because... Most of y'all know I like Tyler Perry. I know some people can't ca don't care for him, don't care for a lot of his movies or a lot of his sitcoms or him at all. <laughs> don't care for Medea, don't care for none of that. But I am a huge Tyler Perry fan. And on top of that, um, one of the main characters in this movie, I adore. I really adore. Um, and let me just... Uh, First of all, say, now I just saw a lot of reviews from some critics and some of them said, you know, the movie was not all that. And then I didn't hear from other people, um, including people on Facebook and social media, that they thought the movie was awesome. And they thought it might even be a part two to this movie. And that was, I saw that comment before I actually watched the movie. So now that I watched the movie, I really do believe too that it might be a part two to this movie. But anywho, let me just let you guys know, um, it's going to be some spoilers in this. So if you're coming in and you don't want to uh, hear the spoilers, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, for the rest of you guys, whether you watched it or not, if you want to, you know, hear what my opinion is on the show, on the movie, and you want to voice your opinions if you saw the movie as well, please feel free to comment what you thought about the movie in the chat. I would love to hear from you what you thought about Tyler Perry's newest work. And is one of my eyebrows kind of, hold up. Hold on, I need my little eyebrow brush. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, some of the stars um in the show was Crystal Fox, um, who plays Grace, who also stars in Tyler Perry's film, um, The Have and the Have Nots, which I actually do reviews on. Um, Crystal, she has been acting for ever like forever i think she's a very talented actress um she first played in for some of y'all who might be heat of the night fans you might remember her as uh luann corbin in the series the heat of the night and from 1998 uh she appeared in different uh theatrical the yeah theatrical productions including for color girls and everybody's ruby um, and again, she stars in Tyler Perry's uh, TV sitcom, The Have and Have Nots. She's been starring in that since 2013. And her name in that movie or that TV sitcom that she goes by is Hannah. 
Young. I love me some Hannah Young. And if you've been following Tyler Perry's um, The Have and Have Nots, again, I do reviews on that show. So feel free when you see the notification that I'm about to do a review on the show, feel free to tune in and check out some of the past reviews, of course, that I've already done on the show. So yes, but anyway, so not only is she one of the stars in the movie, but also um, <clears throat> McCad Brooks, who plays Shannon in the movie, and very handsome black man. He's been in a lot of films, also a lot of um, TV shows from Malcolm in the Middle, Cold Case, Ghost Whisperer, um, The Game, The Game, and uh, and also you know a lot of the, a lot of other movies. Um, like I said, uh, Brisha. Brisha Webb, a lot of you guys might remember her very well. She paid, played in a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies. Um, she played in Acrimony, Night nice School, uh, Zombie Love. Um, I really hate my ex, but where I mostly remember her from is Love That Girl. Remember M. Unique? <laughs> M Unique, the most one of the most hoodest ghettoest names I've ever heard before. M Unique uh, Jefferson. She played in Love That Girl for four years um, on TV One. So that's where I mainly remember her from. And I thought she was like the goofiest, craziest, cutest little thing. So yeah, I've been a fan of her since then. But this movie, I thought was really good. So I know some of the critics was like, yeah, you know, Tyler Perry does some great work, but you know, some of his work falls short and they felt this work fell short or fell short. So again, I want to know how you guys, you know, feel about the movie. But anyway, let's jump right into it. Uh, the movie has started off really slow, like really slow. Like, um, I was kind of wondering where is this going? <laughs> And also, I forgot to tell y'all, Cicely, Cicely Tyson played in this also. And I had just read somewhere where Cicely Tyson, she was her, um, I don't know if it was an interview or something like that, but she said that she is not going to stop acting until she's dead. And you know, Cicely Tyson is like 95 years old now. She plays in this movie also, Alice. Um, Tyler Perry plays in this movie as well. He plays um, the boss. Rory, his name is Rory, and he plays uh Jasmine's um boss and uh Brisha Webb, she plays Jasmine, Cicely Tyson, she plays an elderly lady named Alice, McCab Brooke plays Shannon, this guy that um that uh Sarah meets. I mean not Sarah, but Grace meets and Crystal Fox from the Having to Have Not. She plays Grace Ann Waters. Felicia Rashad plays her friend Sarah. And again, Brisha Webb plays um Jasmine, an attorney. Cicely Tyson plays an elderly lady named Alice. And Tyler Perry plays Jasmine's boss, Rory. So okay, now that I got that out the way, those are like the top stars or the top cast members in the show. So anyway, um it started off kind of slow, and I was kind of like wondering where the heck it was going. Um, Shannon, uh, Shannon, he came into play basically because of the fact that Grace Ann Waters, she had got a divorce. She was um, a single woman, um, middle-aged woman, and her friend Sarah kept telling her, Grace, I'm tired of seeing you moping around and unhappy and woo -woo, woo woo I think you need to start dating. You need to start going out. You've been separated from your husband for some time. You done bought a home. You now own your home. I mean, you got a great job. You got great friends, but you need somebody special in your life. So she has suggested that she go on Christian Mingo. <laughs> Or some type of, I don't know. If, I don't think she necessarily said Christian Mingo, but she did say some Christian dating website because the thing about grace is she's like this sweet little church going bible thumping cookie baking homeless shelter feeding um charity giving she's like a really 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 sweet lady uh who thought she was in a great relationship till she found out that her husband of so many years cheated on her with his very very young uh receptionist or was it secretary i think secretary she caught them in bed <laughs> so um 
she convinces uh Sarah convinces Grace that she needs to uh be introduced to a good friend of hers, a photographer friend. So Grace finally um takes her up on this offer and she goes to this art gallery and she's looking at all the art displays and you know just perusing the joint and who walks up to her but the photographer he kind of plays it off and acts like he's not the real photographer and she's up there commenting on the work and all this and she thinks it's a woman because the photographer's name is shannon and woo -woo -woo. and then once you know the host uh gets called up into the middle of the floor to speak about their artwork and stuff she realizes shannon is not a woman but shannon is this handsome black man <laughs> that she was talking to so that's how they get introduced next thing you know he done dropped off some artwork at her uh job and that was crazy because i was like how the heck he find out where she worked and she was like how the heck did he find out what bank i work at or where i work at and he said that he had um got her name and information from the sign-in list at the art gallery and i'm like okay so he got her name so then he found out where she worked and all this you know none of that like got my attention at that point i'm just thinking okay he got her information from the sign-in sheet <laughs> but later we learned how he really got that information but anyway they started courting each other and when i say courting each other i mean really courting each other she was she wanted to keep it old school as possible so they did the old school courting she wouldn't give in to him she wouldn't um have sex with him she wouldn't let him come up in her house you know nothing like that they went on dates romantic dinners romantic uh evenings i mean he took her to some really romantic places and then one of the places he finally took her was to this beautiful garden and i guess in this beautiful garden there's like all these fireflies or lightning bugs how we used to call them um that once you stir up the garden the fireflies they just come out of nowhere and it's just beautiful and they light up the sky and it's just beautiful and that's where he took her had her spinning around had her twirling around like kenya moore had her twirling around and <laughs> the lightning bugs or the fireflies just started appearing out of man why she was just up there just you know marveling over the fireflies and the beauty he bends down on bending knees and when she turns around, she sees that he has a ring and he is proposing to her and he asks her to marry her. And hey, everybody who's tuning in in the bushes, feel free to comment in the chat if you like, especially if you saw this uh, Tyler Perry movie <laughs> on Netflix. But uh, yeah, so he asks her to marry her and she immediately says yes. And I was thinking at that time, like, what the hell? Okay, so he's been taking you on all these romantic dinners and to these romantic places and, you know, treating you really nice and really sweet and being a gentleman at all times and but they really haven't dated that long but anyway she thought he was worthy to be her husband and she was worthy to be his wife so she was like i do i accept <laughs> i will marry you and that went to i mean it seemed like everything was okay they had a beautiful uh wedding she was dressed up to the nines in her wedding gown and you know the wedding party was beautiful and it was just beautiful and i'm like okay this lady got into this relationship um this heated steamy relationship she tells the man that she'll marry him she gets married so how the heck she end up in jail behind bars facing murder charges <laughs> I'm like facing murder charges for killing her husband. I'm like, how the heck did this happen? What happened, Hannah? That's it is so funny because the whole movie, I'm in my head, I'm thinking Hannah, Hannah, because that's her name from the Have and Have Nots, which I've been watching for seasons for years. And so, I mean, every time I see her, I just think Hannah. <laughs> but in this movie, her name is Grace. So I'm like, what the heck happened, Grace? What really happened, child? But you know, the story goes on and it's like once she starts once she got married to him everything was going cool at first but then one night one night she walks in on him uh i think she was upstairs in bed and she walked downstairs to see why he ain't came to bed or what's going on 
and she walks in on hearing his phone discussion and he's telling somebody on the phone did you enjoy the fireflies and of course automatically she's like what enjoy the fireflies who are you talking to she like who are you talking to and he's like hold up first of all first of all he got off the phone he told them he'll talk to them later he got off the phone let me turn off my notifications on my phone because it's just Okay, turn off the notification on my phone. Um, because my Facebook and inbox and everything is popping. But uh, she, he turns, he gets off the phone and he turns to her. And I'm telling you, that look he gave her, I thought he was about to get up and beat her tail. He got up talking about, first of all, Grace, wife, let me tell you something. There's two things that I don't like. And one of them is being checked up on, and the other one is being questioned. To me, that's all one thing. But anywho, he was like, <laughs> so don't ever do that again. And he, she's up there apologizing. Well, uh, I'm sorry. I missed you. Uh, he was like, I missed you too. Next thing you know, everything is cool. But she did call her friend Sarah, the one who suggested that she even go out with the guy, Shannon. And Sarah was like, you know, you don't trip. You know, you're blowing us out of proportion. You know, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. It's probably nothing. He's not, you know, don't don't look too deep in this because Grace was believing that it might be another woman. Like he took me to see the fireflies and then he asked me to marry him. He proposed to me at that same location. And now he's on the phone in the middle of the night asking somebody else. How did you like the fireflies? So, of course, any other woman would naturally assume that it might be something going on. But anyway, Sarah, she she basically lets her feel like it's nothing. It's nothing. You know, it's nothing. <laughs> the next day, she gets called into her office. Grace gets called into her office at the bank by her bosses. And they got a whole meeting up there. All the executives is in there. And they started flipping out on her because they done did an internal audit on her department and three hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars is missing from her account and they are accusing her of stealing the money now even though she's been working there for a while and she thinks you know why would you think i did this you know i've been a faithful employee i come to work all the time do overtime all that kind of stuff stay late and I ain't never stole a penny, but now you think I done up and ran off with, well, not ran off because she's still there, but up and stole 379000 from our accounts? They didn't want to hear it, though. They had too much evidence. I mean, they had her company ID, the person who did it, used her company ID, her passwords, her computer IP, her name, her codes, her laptop. I mean, so they fired her. They fired her. They fired her and told her, you know, if you don't give us the $379,000 back, then you can face prison time. And she she still was like, I ain't do it. I, I, I did it, boss. I ain't did it. <laughs> so she she leaves, packs her stuff, you know, leaves the premises. They walk her out. Security walks her out the door. And I'm like, hold up, hold up. So what, wait a minute, wait a minute. $379,000 is missing from your account. Okay. She gets off, she was not off of work. She's fired. <laughs> she leaves her job and she uh, calls Sarah again, her friend Sarah, and tells her what's going on. And Sarah's consoling her and telling her something, you know, they got, they going to figure it out or whatever. She calling her husband, Shannon. He's not answering the phone. He's nowhere to be found. And she just assumes that he might be with this other woman who he was on the phone with talking about the fireflies in the garden and all that kind of stuff. And then and he walks, he walks in the home acting all nonchalant like he ain't her he ain't heard his phone ring like he ain't know she called and she's talking to him and she's like telling him the money you know what happened to the money the money missing in thin air and she's accusing him of being with another woman and then he's like sarah can i be alone with my wife aka can you get the hell out of our house sarah was like i ain't going nowhere Man, I'm telling you, when I tell you Felicia Rashad is a bomb-ass actress, she was sitting there 
I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying right here. And he was like, oh, so you just going to let your uh, friend sit here and talk to me like that in front of you? Hannah, a uh, Hannah. See, I call her Hannah. I keep calling her Hannah because, you know, she's been playing on the have and have nots for so long. But anyway, Grace, she was like, it's okay, Sarah. It's okay. I'll be fine. I'm thinking again, this man is about to beat her butt just because of the way his whole attitude, his whole demeanor, the sound of his voice. Sarah ups and leaves. All right, I'm out. She, she, I would have been on the same thing. I ain't leaving because he was just looking too threatening. Like, if I leave out of here, my homegirl get molly whopped and monkey stomped in this house. I'm coming back for his. <laughs> but anyway, Sarah laughing. I'm like, okay, okay. He about to whoop her tail. He about to get into grace. But anyway, he consoles her and he's telling her, oh, we gonna handle this. And I was with such and such. He throws all these pictures on the table, all these photography pictures of these elderly people. I didn't even get it at that time. I was like, still not getting it. I'm telling you, Tyler Perry, I don't care what people say. I thought the movie was good. Uh, some critics is like, yeah. Some critics is like, nah. But I thought it was really, really good. And I can be really critical when it comes to movies and TV shows. Um, but at that time, now, if y'all if y'all seen the movie, y'all let me know. Did y'all think something was up? I mean, I thought something was up with the pictures, but I didn't think it was what it was. I'm like, hold up, this fool, he trying to get out of what he really doing. He know he cheating on his wife, but he going to throw her these pictures showing the old, these old He's, he called them cancer patients. These old cancer patients, he took them to the same garden where he took his wife when he proposed, and they got to see all the fireflies, aka lightning bugs, and he was like, the lady you caught me on the phone with late at night, that was their senior nurse, and he was asking her how did he like the fireflies photo shoot, so I'm like, okay, he might have done this photo shoot with these elderly women, but I'm thinking, you still cheating on your wife, you just trying to use this, you know, as an excuse to get her mind off of things, but anywho, Anywho, he tells she she apologizes and he's like, We're gonna figure this out and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, <laughs> Nephew Charmer Chucky, you said I need me the sugar mama that wants me to have some money like that. <laughs> she paid for that time. <laughs> Man, when he said that, nephew charm, I mean, okay, we we gonna get into that. <laughs> We gonna get into that, but that I was dead. I was dead after that comment. He was like, "You paid for this. You owe me this." I was like, "What the hell? What the hell?" But yeah, and so <laughs> he um he was at playing it, just playing it all cool and acting like he don't know what's going on and all that kind of stuff. She told him about the mortgage. Uh, she's behind on her mortgage and talk thinks somebody has stole her ID and. When Grace found out what was going on after she went to see the bank and looked at the surveillance cameras and found out that it was her own husband, Shannon, who did it, and he's up there denying it, just denying it. She's like, you you on camera. I, I got the video footage. I sent it to your phone. Check it out. He looks at his phone and he's like, uh, well, see what had happened was... <laughs> He confesses that he needed the money to pay off some people that um, you don't really want to owe money to. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, all right, all right. I can believe that part. He stole the money because he figured, you know, he, I don't know, he might owe some money to some, I don't, I, I don't know, gambling debts or I don't know. But I'm thinking, okay, that's believable, but still. She want her money back, and this fool gonna tell her, I ain't giving you shit back. First of all, I'm married to you, so what's yours is mine, what's mine is yours by the law in our state, and on top of that, you owe me. He was like, you owe me. You was all miserable and lonely and, <laughs> and by yourself after your husband left you and left you for his secretary. He was like, you owe me. You owe me. I done came into your life and I done turned your whole world around and I showed you love and I married you and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, this mofo didn't. And he's talking about he ain't gonna leave the house. 
She like, get the hell out. He's like, I'm not leaving. This is our house. Our house. Man, I, I'm surprised at that time she did not flip out at that time. But it came later. It came later. She called the cops, told the cops she wanted him to leave. Just as I would suspect in most cases, when the cop comes, they, um, uh, but, but ma'am, this your husband. He ain't beating on you. He ain't hit you. He ain't threatening you. Yeah, he, he cheated on you. He's sleeping with women in your own house now. He done had some young tail up in the bedroom and she done walked in. It brought back flashbacks of her when she walked in on her husband her ex-husband and his secretary. Now she walking on her new husband and his little young little tramp thing up in there. Did y'all see that part, nephew Charmy? Hey, Felicia Fee. Did y'all see the part where when she walked in on him with the young tail and she said, no, you didn't. You got me up in your mama's house. <laughs> I was dead. He was like, no, my mama looked better than that. That ain't my mama. <laughs> and they kept on doing it. Then he walks her out kissing and holding her and asks when the next time she going to be over. She said, do you think your mama would mind? He said, oh, don't worry about her. And while Grace is sitting in the other room listening, enraged, like enraged because you not only slept with a woman in my crib, you slept with her in our bed. And then after I busted you, you stayed in there and finished the job. <laughs> and then you walking her out and inviting her back over. <laughs> I was like, and he stole her money, nephew Charming. $379,000 and he stole her money. I was like, ain't this about a Got a blimp. I was like, <laughs> you said a hundred thousand to see fireflies. <laughs> Man, she probably paid for her own ring when you come to think about it. She probably paid for her own wedding. She paid for her own dress. She obviously paid for everything because this fool, he. <laughs> I was like, man, that was wild. I would have been so upset, so upset. I don't know how, I don't know how I would have reacted in this same situation. I really don't, I really don't know how I would have acted in this same situation. But one thing for sure and two thirds for certain, <laughs> she got his ass. You said, uh, he, <laughs> yes. He's calling her grandma. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. But oh um, yeah, so the police wouldn't make him leave. He wouldn't leave. And I was thinking, just change the locks. And I'm thinking that ain't gonna work because this fool, he better come in and kick the door down and manage to make her give up the keys to the locks and everything. But anyway, she done flipped out. He sat down in the chair and he was talk just giving her every reason, every excuse why he was able to do what he did to her. He was like, you weak, you lonely, you old, you vulnerable. I mean, he was just letting her have it, letting her have it. Next thing you know, she must have picked up a bag and swung that mofo all around the world and I, 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 I and start beating all the brain matter out of his head. She beat all the brain matter out of his head. I'm like, blood everywhere. Then she dragged him to the basement, pushed him down in the basement. Then she jumped in her car and drove off, left him there in the basement, bleeding profusely, blood all on the walls, blood on the chair, blood on the carpet, blood everywhere, blood on the back, blood on her. And she jumped in her car and she drove off and called her friend, the one who suggested they she hook up with Shannon in the first place, called her friend Sarah, Miss Felicia Rashad, and explained to her what happened. And she drove off. She went all the way to Illinois. Next thing you know, she's in jail. She's behind bars and facing murder charges. And... She knows that she killed this man. So she's like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, plead guilty. Her lawyer, 
<laughs> her lawyer tried to get her not to plead guilty. At first, her lawyer was like, "Okay, I'm a um, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna talk you into getting this plea deal, and all you want is to be in a prison as close to your son." So that he don't have to travel so far, you know, to visit you and, you know, your grandkids if they come to the jail. But, you know, basically her son and stuff. So her lawyer, Jasmine, um, which is played by Brisha Webb, um, she tells her, OK, all right. But then she she's like, Jasmine was like, no, nah, this ain't all adding up. It got to be something else to this story. This is not adding up. And she didn't think she was guilty. So she begged her to tell her the story and she didn't turn in the plea deal to the court because she was like, no, I'm not turning in this plea deal. I think if you tell me the story, I can fight for you and get you off. So Jasmine, she she lets her tell her the story. She told her everything that happened. But then Jasmine, her attorney was like, but hold up. You said you killed the man. You pushed him down a flight of stairs. You drove off. But you didn't move the body? And she's like, no, I didn't move the body. I left the body. She's like, well, where's the body? Because ain't nobody found the body. So then I'm thinking, where the hell is the body? Did this fool get up and run? Did he take off and run in the middle of the night and he's out in hiding? I'm like, no, why would he be out in hiding? Because if his wife tried to kill him, he got all these young women that he's messing with and stole all her money and everything. Why won't he just go to the cops and say, my wife tried to kill me and make sure she goes to jail? <sighs> This is where it gets really, really suspenseful. So she's sitting in the jail. Grace telling her the story. Once she hears the story and once she realizes that somebody else had to be involved, she's like, you called Sarah, your friend that night, right? Do you think Sarah might have went over there to uh, move, you know, your husband, Shannon, do you think she might have tried to cover it up? Because from all the evidence and the blood splatter and all this, they was like all the blood that should have been found from that type of beating with a baseball bat to the brain. It should have been that much blood all over the house. But what they found was a little bit of blood here, a little bit of blood here that could equal up to amount of blood over times over through the years. That's when I started thinking, well, Shannon whooping her butt and we just didn't see them scenes because wh where is all the blood? <laughs> where is all the blood? And then when the attorney tried to say, you know, well, it could have been blood from throughout the years, you know, that just accumulated and you thought it was enough to kill a person to be left over from somebody who's been murdered. But anyway, that was really confusing there. And then she was like, you know what? The attorney, she went and talked to Sarah, her friend, talked to Sarah. While she's up there sitting around talking to Sarah at her house, she sees this little old lady played by Cicely Tyson, and the little old lady's name is Alice, and she sees her peek around the corner while uh, Sarah, she went to look for some photos or look for something, and she's like, hi to the little old lady and the little old lady she just turns around and she hurries up and try to you know get back to where the heck she was going in the house and i'm like what is this little old lady at that time i'm like she up in there abusing old people what's she doing with these old people up in her house sarah what you doing with these old people in your house because I'm like that can't be her mama or nothing you know looking just looking very weathered and her clothes was all raggedy and her hair was all towed back and i'm like what is going on with this little old lady and who is the little old lady <sighs> she brings a photo back <clears throat> sarah brings a photo back and she's showing her the photo and everything and then next thing we know um come to find out that sarah she said Grace's son, Malcolm, also was at the house that night. So she's trying to lead it on that maybe possibly Malcolm 
have something to do with the body and Malcolm might have moved the body. But when the attorney, when she brings it back to Grace's attention, Grace is like, no, no, no. I don't want them to have nothing to do with it. I killed him. I killed him. I don't know where the body went, but I killed him. I know I killed him. I don't know where the body went, but I don't want my son or my friend, my best friend, Sarah, involved. So she don't call neither one of them to the stand. Once she um, convinces Grace to uh, let her try the case and, you know, take it to the jury and stuff, when it seemed like all hope was gone while she was trying to plead the case and the prosecutors, they just had so much ammunition and it looked like the case was lost. The attorney, Jasmine, she was like, please, Grace, please let me call your son or, you know, your best friend, Sarah, you know, to the stand and Grace still didn't want her to do it. But anyway, Jasmine went ahead and she called uh, her friend Sarah to the stand. Man, all the pressure that those prosecuting attorneys put on Sarah. Sarah was up. They was like, hold up, Sarah. Now you say Grace called you that night. What did y'all talk about? And Sarah was like, oh, uh, let's see. Uh, we talk about feeding the homeless. Uh, we talked about her son, Malcolm. And they was like, well, how long were you on the phone? And I think she said like 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And the prosecutor attorney was like, but hold up. The phone records only so show y'all was on here for a few minutes. And Jasmine was like, hold the hell. Where did these phone records come in? Why I didn't get, you know, introduced to no phone records? Why? Because Jasmine just took the case a few weeks ago. Because at first they was trying to get Grace to plead out and just say she guilty and get her in a nice little prison nearby her her son so he didn't have to travel far but at the last minute jasmine was like no we trying this case the evidence and the phone records that the prosecutors had she didn't know about because she just got on the case and she didn't try to find out if there's any phone records or anything like that so basically they got her next thing you know they asked sarah what did y'all really talk about Sarah's like, uh, 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 um, well, um, uh. they was like, do you know you can go to jail? <laughs> they was like, do you know that you can go to jail, Sarah? If you do not tell us what really happened, you know, what the phone call was about, do you realize you can go to jail along with Grace? That's when Sarah, she let it be known that Grace told her that night that she killed her husband. That it was a wrap then. It was a wrap. <laughs> it was a wrap. Sarah was like, she killed, she told me she killed her husband. And I'm sitting there like, hold up, hold up. At that minute, I was like, something's wrong. Something wrong. It was a good movie, Felicia. I loved it. I really, really loved it. I'm like, but at that point, I was like, something's wrong. Grace, you her best friend. Why would you say that? I mean. Okay, they could have brought you up on charges, you know, for not telling the truth on the stand, you know, but um, still, I, I don't know. You just sat there and said, she told me that she killed her husband. I would have been found guilty for perjury because I wouldn't have told that my bestie killed her husband. <laughs> But anyway, she told her, and I knew at that point that something wasn't right with Miss Sarah, Miss Felicia Rashad. But um, anyway, she got found guilty. They put her in jail. But I do like the attempt that Jasmine tried to make at the next day or the next time they came to court when they had to give their closing arguments <clears throat> or their closing statement after the prosecutors gave their closing statement. And then she get up there and she's like, I'm going to call uh, Sarah back to the stand. And the judge was like, hold the hell up. Where, where, where they do that at? You can't call nobody back to the stand after you done already rested your case the other day. You can't just call somebody back to the stand. But what you can do is file an appeal. So she was like, oh, file an appeal. No, we're not doing that. And she was like, I want to call Sarah back to the stand. And the reason why she did that was because the night after the after the trial ended, after the closing statements, 
uh, she went home and she was being like a bee to her husband. He was trying to feed her, make sure she eat dinner. And she was just up there. She was so upset and crying and emotional and, and all that kind of stuff because her she lost the case. <clears throat> Excuse me. She lost the case. At least she believes she lost the case, um, even though closing statements weren't done and all that. The case wasn't all the way wrapped up. But she figured she lost the case because Sarah, you know, said that Grace told her she killed her husband. Her boss then, Tyler Perry, his name Rory in the movie, he walked into the courtroom and he was going off on her, talking about her, telling her that, you know, he's disappointed in her and how he missed the phone records. He was like, I even knew about the phone records because I had been shadowing you. So he had been shadowing, shadowing her because I think he really wanted to see if she could really win the case, even though he had doubts about her because she never tried a case before. She always pleaded out, but it was never big cases like this where she truly believed that the the person being tried um, was guilty. I mean, was innocent. And she definitely thought that Grace was innocent. So that's why she decided to try the case. So her husband walks in the court ha courtroom and hears her boss talking down on her like that and insulting her. And he was like, he heard her boss say that he was insulted because she allowed a witness to leave the stand saying that her client is a murderer. And I was looking at that too, like when it happened, like hold up, her best friend, her witness said, my friend killed her husband. And then you just rested your case. Like you just let her sit there and say she did it. But I think she was kind of in shock when she heard Sarah say that. So I think she was kind of in shock and that's why she was like, Okay, <laughs> it's over. We tried, but it's over. But anyway, she blows up on her husband later that night because she thought her husband should have defended her. And he was like, but, but your boss made some good points. And then she was real mad because he agreed with some of the things her boss had said. But then, you know, after they talked it out and he consoled her and, and pushed her to continue fighting, that's when she showed up in court instead of giving a closing statement she's up there telling the judge i want to call sarah back to the stand because i should have questioned her after she said my client is a murderer and the judge was like well that's too bad again where they do that at you should have done that when you had miss sarah on the stand the first time so he was like hey no she kept standing up i want to call sarah to the stand <laughs> And the judge was like, listen, I need you in my office right now. You and the prosecuting attorney. She was like, no, I ain't going nowhere until you put Sarah on the stand. I was cracking up. I was like, well, go ahead, go ahead, Jasmine. I'm like, it ain't going to happen. But anyway, they ended up putting her in jail for contempt of court. So she's in jail. Grace is in jail for murder. She's The lawyer's in jail for... <laughs> contempt of court <laughs> and i'm like what the hell is going on her her uh husband he was like please just apologize to the judge babe so we can go home just apologize to the judge she didn't want to apologize to the judge but she apologized to the judge the judge let her off um after that she was like uh <clears throat> i want to go talk to sarah Please take me to Sarah's house. Her husband's like, you sure you want to go talk to Sarah? She's like, yeah, I want to talk to Sarah. Uh, but just, you know, a few blocks away from Sarah's house, she's like, let me out. I'll walk. I'll walk the rest of the way. So he goes on to work because he's a cop and he had to be back on duty. While she's at Sarah's house, knocks on the door. She, uh, I mean, while she's at Sarah's house, when she approaches the house, she notices the little old lady, Alice, the one that she had seen people around the corner at Sarah's house. The first time she visited Sarah to interview her about Grace, the little old lady was walking around outside in the middle of the street with a nightgown, with a um, house robe on, just looking lost. Come on, she's trying to go back home. She don't want to go back to Sarah's house. Please don't take me back to Sarah's house. And I'm like, yeah, Sarah, but she's in there abusing some elderly ladies. <laughs> I'm like, she up there abusing this lady. I'm like, why is this lady scared to go back to Sarah's house? Then she talking about she wants to go back home. And Sarah, um, 
I mean, uh, Jasmine, she takes the little old lady back in the house and sits her down. The little old lady's like, I want to go home. And she gives her the address where her home is. Come to find out, her home is the same address that the bank had given Grace when she asked for the mortgage papers information and where the mail was sent and all this kind of stuff for the mortgage that had been taken out on her home that she didn't sign for, that she found out her husband signed for. And the address was 2989 Sycamore Street. The same address and a bell went off in Jasmine's head when she heard that address. She's like, why that address sounds familiar? Then she realized where that address sounded familiar. But by that time, her husband had got a call when he was arresting somebody and they told him to check his computer. He checks his computer. She He finds out that Sarah has been involved in some illegal activities and he sees all her mug shots. So he immediately leaves the guy that he's arrested and got bent over his car in handcuffs. He leaves him there standing on the side of the street in handcuffs and hightails it over to Sarah's house. <clears throat> because he just has a sense that his wife might be in danger. While he's heading over to Sarah's house, Jasmine, she's talking to the little old lady. Next thing you know, she hears some noises from the basement. She goes in the basement to investigate. And what do she find? All these little old ladies just looking so helpless, like they've been starving to death, abused, taken advantage of, mistreated. I mean, they look so bad. They look so bad. And they was chained to the wall. All of them. It had to have been like 20, 25 little old ladies chained to the wall. And next thing you know, somebody comes behind uh, Jasmine and grabs her around her mouth and drags her somewhere and ties her up and chains her and gag her at the mouth. Sarah comes home. She realized immediately something's wrong. Something's wrong because little Miss Old Alice, Cicely Tyson, sitting at the ta sitting at the table just looking crazy. Sarah goes downstairs in the basement and she uh walks in and finds Jasmine all tied up and stuff and chained up. And she's like, Hold up, hey Candace. I thought it was an excellent movie. I really thought it was an excellent movie. She walks in and finds uh Jasmine tied up. And then behind her walks up Shannon. Now we know where the body went. He talking about, hey, mama. <laughs> Calling Sarah his mama. I'm like, hold up, hold up. This is not happening. <laughs> I'm like, Tyler Perry, I cannot stand you, Tyler Perry. I, I mean, I didn't put none of that together. I knew something was off with Sarah. I knew she was abusing elderly people but like at the beginning of the show at the beginning of the show when uh jasmine husband the cop when he had was called to a scene at this house and he was he had went on the roof because a little old lady was threatening to jump he begged her and tried to plead with her to not jump she ends up jumping off the roof and remember that he came home and he told his wife that night jasmine the attorney told her i just saw somebody jump off a roof and commit suicide. And that was it, though. He didn't go into any... Jasmine had no idea who house it was, who lived there, none of that stuff. She didn't know Sarah anyway. But that was the same house where the little old lady had jumped off the roof. And that's what little old Alice was telling um Jasmine before she walked in the basement. She was like, I don't want to, I don't want to die. I don't want to die like the rest of my friends. I don't want to die here at this house like the rest of those old ladies. And she started naming off all the people, you know, who had died at the house. And she started naming off, then she named off Shane, the lady who jumped to her death from the roof. And I was like, wow, that was the little old lady that, um, Jasmine's husband tried to save at the beginning of the show. But anyway, so Jasmine's husband, he finally comes in and he's fighting with Shannon, uh, Grace's ex-husband. And next thing you know, Shannon, she gets, uh, I mean, Jasmine gets loose, grabbed a gun and shoots Shannon. Shoots Shannon. So basically in the end, they find out 
that grace really didn't do it. You said you tripped him out. You said uh, that tripped him out because he never, he never said nothing else. Yeah, he never said nothing else. He was just like, I just saw, saw a lady jump to her death, and I didn't think nothing of it either. At the beginning of the movie, I'm like, oh, that's so sad. Why that little old lady jumped to her death? I'm thinking she was crazy, psychotic, schizophrenic. I'm like, oh, some drugs, some medicines that reacted wrong to her. And I'm thinking that's why she jumped <laughs> from the roof. But yeah, that was crazy. At the end, come to find out, then Sarah and her son had been up to a lot of mess for over 25 years. They been hustling, honey. <laughs> For over 25 years, they been hustling. They been kidnapping and abusing elderly women, taking all their money, including their disability checks, and holding them hostage. And I'm like, when they said holding them hostage, and I saw all those women in the basement, I'm like, they probably holding them hostage till they die. And then they discard or get rid of their body. And then not only that, but Shannon, a.k.a. Maurice, because his real name is Maurice Mills, and his mother, uh, Sarah, her real name is Betty Mills, come to find out. But Maurice, he also um, was involved in bigamy, bigamy and is wanted in nine different states for bigamy, racketeering, and conning at least 16 other middle-aged women. So on top of them kidnapping all these old ladies for over 25 years and holding them hostage. Not only did he con, uh, I'm about to say Hannah. <laughs> I swear, every time I look at that lady, I want to call her Hannah from the have and the have nots. But Grace, not only did he con her a middle-aged woman, but he con like 16 other middle-aged women, women into their money too. They was paid they was paid they made so many millions over 25 years they made so many millions of dollars over that time cunning and abusing and kidnapping all those women all those victims they made so much money so much money but now grace she's been vindicated she's been vindicated and i wonder i wonder uh, as far as Jasmine goes, because we didn't really see um her and her boss interaction after that, because her boss Rory, played by Tyler Perry, had told her if she tried that case and she lost, she was gonna be fired and her career was gonna be ruined. Uh, she won't be an attorney anymore. So I wonder, being that I really think it's gonna be a part two to this. I wonder if she is going to start up her own law firm or something because her boss really did have no faith in her and threatened to fire her and was not letting her try any cases, was just letting her plea cases for all this time while she was working at the firm. And then when she thinks that she can really win a case, she messed up. She missed something. She messed up. But it was her first case that she tried. And he didn't have no faith in her, didn't back her, didn't try to help her. No way, no how. And so she lost the case, but come to find out she was right all along. She knew that it was more to that story. And Grace didn't kill her husband after all. He survived. He survived to, to live to see another day to try to uh, hustle <laughs> and abuse and kidnap and con some old elderly women. But now he did. <laughs> At least I think he's dead after uh Jasmine shot him. I do believe he might be dead this time. You say all them poor ladies, man, all them poor old ladies looking like they was in some kind of third world country. I mean, just looking like they was starving, dehydrated, malnourished. I mean, I was like, them poor old ladies, they look like they was two seconds from being dead. Like, really, they was all pale. When they was having them walk out, they was all chained up. So when they had them walking out the house, you know, in line, single file, I was looking at, like, they was all pale and stuff. Even the black ones, they looked white. That's how pale they was. <laughs> you said she probably isn't going back. He probably, he absolutely had, he had no faith in her anyway. I would be, if I was her, 
I would go and I would open my own law firm and I would take clients who are um, said to be guilty, clients who really, really, really are convincing enough that I think it might be a change I can get them off because they're not really guilty. So I think that's what she should do. But as far as Candace, do you think it might be a part two, the way it kind of ended? Because <laughs> what had happened was while uh, Jasmine and her husband was downstairs fighting, um, fighting off, uh, let me get the real name right. Uh, her name is Sarah, but AKA Betty Mills. Um, when they were fighting Sarah's son, uh, the cop, Jasmine's uh, husband, he had handcuffs. He had handcuffed uh, Sarah behind her back upstairs. So I'm like, what happened to Sarah? She was handcuffed at the table. Next thing you know, she done disappeared. They said she's on the run. And she shows up at another person's house, some white woman. She shows up at her house because the white lady was looking for somebody to care for her elderly parent, her elderly mother. And Sarah shows up and she was like, nice to meet you. You know, and the lady was like, oh, I'm so happy you're here. I've been looking for someone to take care of my mother. And Sarah immediately says, well, what did she used to do? What kind of work did she used to do? And the white lady goes into telling her what she used to do for years and all this. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> Sarah done probably taking up a whole new identity. Ain't no telling what name she is using now. <laughs> I didn't like, I mean, the ending was like, I love how Grace got vindicated. And I think the, the son, um, the guy she was married to, Shannon, a.k.a. Maurice Mills, uh, his real name in the show. I think, I do think he might be dead, but as far as uh, Sarah, I do think it's going to be a part two. And I think it's going to be more of Sarah still hustling and still uh, being conning, you know, old women out of their money and stuff. But I think she's going to try to get retaliation for her son's death. That's what I think that's going to happen. But Anyway, y'all let me know how y'all feel. Let me know what y'all think. If that's what's going to happen, if she's going to try to retaliate for her son's death, or do y'all think he's really dead at all? <laughs> like before, I mean, I don't know how the heck he, Sarah, whew, I don't know how the heck Sarah's son survived the first time because Grace was beating the mess out of him with that baseball bat. When he wouldn't leave her house, he she was beating the mess out of his head with that baseball bat, and he survived. So, shoot, I don't know. He might have survived that gunshot at the end. <laughs> like, he got nine lives. Now he got eight lives left. I don't know. I don't know. But the movie I thought was awesome. I thought it was good. And a lot of people agree with me that they thought the movie was good. Um, again, I'm a 10. I'm a 10. <laughs> I'm a fan of Tyler Perry. I'm a fan of Brescia Webb. I'm a fan of Cicely Tyson. And that lady, again, she is 95 years old. And she's like, I'm not going to stop acting until I'm dead. And I believe it. I believe it. Now, I ain't trying to wish death on no one, but I can see her being in the middle of recording a movie or a TV show. And that's how she, that's where she going to be when she gone to glory. I can, I'm telling y'all, I can see it or reading a script or something. <laughs> sure. I can see it. But yeah, she, she says she's going to act to the very end. So I'm, I'm glad she's still around because she's 95 years old. And I mean, she's still a beautiful woman. She's still a great actress. And she, whew, I, I know her family is really proud of her. I know her family, kids, grandkids, you know, is really proud of her because she is an amazing, an amazing woman. And so is Felicia Rashad. Felicia Rashad. Lord have mercy. She's a great actress as well. So, um, you know, I'm a fan of all of them. So I thought this movie and Tyler Perry, of course, you know, I thought this movie, I thought it did great. I thought it did great. I don't I, you know, but you know what? Everybody has their own opinion and, you know, 
<laughs> you know, you said there was a meme on the book that said she was hitting his shoulders. You said, considering no brain splatter. No, did you see the meme that somebody said, you know, it's income tax season and they had a meme of <laughs> the man Shannon, you know, when he was uh, serving uh, Grace breakfast in bed and he had the tray and he had the food on the tray and his shirt was all showing all his muscles and abs and everything. They had a meme and on that meme it had that picture, that scene of him serving her breakfast in bed and it said, you know it's tax season when this happens. <laughs> I just seen the meme like yesterday and I was cracking up. You said, yes, she is. But the role Felicia played got me mad. Felicia played the hell out of that role. I knew she had something to do with this, but I thought I just thought she was. I mean, I, OK, let me put it this way. I knew she was up to something or was doing something that was suspect. I, but I thought she was just um, abusing elderly women. I didn't even put two and two together because at the beginning, when that elderly woman jumped to her death, they didn't show Felicia's house. I mean, Felicia, I'm calling her by her real name. They didn't show Sarah's house um, or nothing like that. So we had no idea that that little old lady that jumped to her death was at Sarah's house when she jumped to her death. So I was just thinking when we saw Cicely Tyson, um, well, Alice was her character name. When we saw Alice sneaking around the corner, and then when we saw her uh, begging uh, Jasmine not to take her back to Sarah's house, that's when I was just like, oh, she's just, she's just abusing elderly women, which is still bad. But I didn't think until... Well, actually, I did think that she was... I, I was kind of suspicious of her a little more when she said in the stand... Yes, Grace told me that she killed her husband. I was like, why would you do that? That's your bestie. Man, I'm telling you, if my bestie was up there and I thought something was awry with her relationship and I thought that maybe she had to do what she did, or I'm like, I plead the fifth. Perjury it is. How much time we get for perjury? I'm going to start me a, a GoFundMe. <laughs> I'm going to start me a GoFundMe so I get the best attorney put money on my books, all that kind of shoe. I'm going to have like $2,000 of phone call privileges and all kind of stuff because I'm like, mm -mm. uh-uh. But you said you knew when she told, when she said Grace told her she did it. Yeah, something wasn't right. I knew it. When she said that, I was like, man, see, Candace, me and you was in the same place. We was in the same place. I was like, something is not right. And I'm like, why does it seem like at that moment she really wants her best friend to go to prison? Come to find out, we know why. Because she tried to kill her son. She tried to kill her best friend's son, who we found out later was her son. But yeah, I thought the uh, movie was great. I really did. The ending, I'm a little skeptical on the ending because it does seem like it might be a, a possibility of a part two, which I'll be totally down to watch and do a review on that one as well. So never know. Never know. Tyler Perry might do a part two. <laughs> and he don't normally do part twos in a lot of his movies. Um, I think only a few of his movies he actually had, you know, a part two on his movies. So, but anyway, and T Way. Anyway, um, that was my review on A Fall from Grace, a new Netflix movie um by Tyler Perry. Uh again, I give it I give it a very high rating. Um I, I don't know. I give it like a nine plus nine and a half. I give it a very high rating. So out of five stars, I'll probably give it five. But yeah. But anyway, y'all, it is Sunday. So y'all know what time it is. That means uh, Power, the new show of Power comes on tonight. Now, I do have some business to attend to this evening. So I don't know if I'll be able to watch Power tonight and do the review tonight. But uh, no matter what time I get done with my business, I am going to watch the show. I just might not be able to review it till tomorrow. But anyway, Power comes on tonight, and I believe it's uh, <clears throat> episode three. Yes, episode three. And so far on Power, we know that um, Ghost, we know that uh, Paz did not kill Ghost. Um, 
we don't know for sure yet if Ghost is dead, if Ghost was ever shot. We really don't know yet, but I think uh, it's going to get more into uh, his wife this episode because you know the last each episode so far has taken one of the characters that we thought you know would try to kill or you know shoot or kill ghost and the first episode was um episode 11 was dre they show dre his steps up to the last minute when coat i mean when ghost is thought of to be maybe dead and then episode 12 uh show passes steps through the last moments of when we leading up to what we assume is ghost being dead um this episode i think is going to uh focus more on tasha i'm not sure you know his wife tasha i'm not sure i'm not sure but i am wondering what the heck is gonna happen to spanky I'm still thinking Spanky's life, uh, his his the rest of his existence time is going to be cut very short because he's you know snitching. But I don't know. We shall see. I'm still looking forward to finding out if Ghost was even killed, if he was even shot, or who might have attempted you know to end his life. So I'm looking forward to the next episode. You said, "Oh yeah." Um, and said it with a straight face with a twist of emotion. Yep. <laughs> oh, you said, uh, same here. Oh, yeah. Um, finishing my paper now and watch it. Oh, yeah. Tonight. So, yeah. As far as power goes tonight, I um, probably won't be able to go live tonight with the review. But I definitely will. If I don't go tonight for a review or do a review tonight, it will be tomorrow. Trust and believe. But, um. If you guys weren't able to tune in to our panel discussion last night, it was me and my co-host, uh, Carmel Diva, and Mr. 402 from Omaha, Nebraska, our hometown. Um, he had slid through. He was like watching the live and was chatting in the live talking about, I'm on my way over to your crib because I want to sit in on the discussion. And I'm up here like, ha, 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 for real? You coming through? <laughs> Next thing we know, we get a call. And he's like, I'm outside, open the door. So <laughs> my homeboy, Mr. 402, he showed up last night. So we actually had a male perspective on the show that we did last night. And the title of the show last night, yes, yes, he came through last night. I was shocked that he actually came through. But um, the title of the show last night, um, it was called <clears throat> and actually I had got it from, I got the idea of the show from a post that I had seen on Facebook about a woman saying that the black man has failed the black race and leadership in the home and in the community and society. And they need to pass the baton on to the women's and let the women's just do everything. So we titled the show last night. Do you believe a black man as far as leadership has failed the black race? And one of my, you know, guy friends he was watching and chatting in the comments and next thing you know he popped up at my front door and pulled up a seat so yeah we had a guy perspective on the subject last night it was a great live i really think that you guys should watch it and please share it and if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell so that you can receive the notifications every time we go live or every time we upload um a new video and also i'm about to wrap this up because i gotta go handle my business but also this wednesday at eight o'clock central standard time we are going to be having an interview with a local um artist here local rap artist here by the name of Renault Toot Brown. A lot of y'all know him by the name of Toot, T-O-O-T. -O -O -T. Uh, Renault Toot Brown, he is a local artist, local rapper from Omaha, Nebraska. Um, he has some upcoming projects. Um, a lot of y'all who uh, is familiar with his music know that he was like one of the top selling uh, rap artists in the Midwest, in our region you know, when we were coming up, well, not when we were coming up, we were gr actually grown, but you know, some time ago, I ain't gonna say how many years ago, because then I'd be saying my age. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so we are going to be um, interviewing him 
um, this Wednesday, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. So again, hit that notification bell. And we're going to talk and chit chat with him about, you know, what he's been up to, what he's been doing, what kind of projects he's working on. And talk to him a little about bit about the Midwest Midwest rap artists and you know the history of you know Midwest and Omaha rappers and all that good stuff. And eight o'clock Central Standard Time Wednesday. So I hope to see you all there. You just ran into him a few weeks ago. That is my guy. Yes, too. We go way way back. <laughs> I'm talking like. Fifth, sixth, seventh grade. We go way, way back. So yeah, I was um when I heard that he had some new projects coming up, I hit him up right away. And he's excited to come on the show and you know talk with us and have a sit down with us on the hood table. So I'm excited too. So again, make sure you are subscribed to our channel um and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we are you know every time we go live or upload a video but yeah so candace i hope you can um tune in wednesday and i just hope i just saw your comment you said uh feather bones in the oven and do these green beans mac and cheese so i can eat and have dessert the red stuff it's been tough out here oh my god that's what you eating today girl. i ain't cooking today don't judge me don't judge me I ain't cooking today, but I got a lot to do, and I was trying to get these reviews out and um, get, you know, handle my business that I had this morning, and today and tomorrow is uh, Martin Luther King Day. It's a holiday, so I should be having a three-day weekend, but I'm not. I signed up to work some overtime because it was just too, I couldn't refuse it. Supervisor called me up like, hey, you want to work tomorrow on Martin Luther King Day? I said, uh, not really. <laughs> this was last Friday. I said, not really. And he was like, well, we're offering, though, um, holiday pay plus time and a half plus a $200 uh, incentive. I started adding, hold on, hold on. Holiday pay, time and a half, $200. I was like, that's how much I'm going to make for eight hours. And I work from home, so I get to sit at home in my jammies. I get to sit at home in my jammies, and I'm making holiday play plus time and a half plus $200 incentive. I was like, you know, in Diary of a Mad Black Woman, when Medea had that calculator, she was trying to calculate how much her niece should get in her divorce settlement. I was like, Okay, I'll work. <laughs> I'll work. I was like, even Martin Luther the King would work on his own holiday for that amount of money. So I'm sure I gotta, you, you know. Mm -hmm. Anywho, <laughs> so yes, tomorrow I will be working on my off day. <laughs> You said, clock me in, girl. I was like, I said, sign me up. He said, you sure? I said, sign me up. <laughs> so, yes, I'm like, heck, yeah, sure. Pass that good old money up. Should I can take off another day. But, <laughs> so, anyhow, anyhow. And that's the deal. So, yeah. So, I'm trying to finish all my little business I got today that I wanted to do tomorrow, my day off, because I'm going to work tomorrow. But anyway, you guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you enjoyed the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, even though I had all kind of spoilers, watch it anyway. Support the movie anyway, especially if you're a Tyler Ferry Tyler Perry fan, especially if you're a have and have nots fan and you love you some Hannah um, and some Felicia Rashad and some Cicely Tyson, I recommend that you support that movie and let me know how you how you feel about the movie or your opinion of the movie and how you rate the movie. Um, if you watch this video after the live is over with, feel free to comment in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on the movie and the characters in the movie. But in the meantime and in between time, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everybody commenting in the chat and socializing with me. And stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out to the squad. Oh, see you Wednesday. <laughs>
for our interview with Toot, rapper, rap artist, well-known mid-rest rap artist from Omaha, Nebraska, Toot Brown, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Goodbye.